Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the monthly readings. This is going to be for all zodiac signs. This is going to be the beginning from Aries all the way to Pisces. So for those of you guys returning, welcome my lovelies. For those of you guys that are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Let's get into the reading. Let's see what Spirit has for all of you guys. Hope you guys are amazing. Happy May. I hope that it's not as chaotic as it is beginning for me. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into your readings. So we're going to start off here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what Spirit has for you guys for this month. What are the messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2022? That was to see clearly and concisely what Aries needs to know at this present time. Here we go, Aries. All right, we're starting off here with the moon card. Hmm, justice, interesting. Nine of cups and the hanged man. Okay, Aries. I see you guys having to make a decision, a decision that may be a bit difficult for you. Um, there is a process of trying to uh, incorporate um, doing what's right for you versus what is right for everyone around you or those that you're dealing with uh, in regards to this situation. The moon could represent uh, hidden emotions, um, emotions that are very triggered or very connected to your subconscious. Uh, as you guys can see, we have the moon and the justice card. So the justice is quite the contrary of the moon. Uh, justice is having the need to separate yourself from your emotions in order to be able to make a rational decision, a decision that is solely ruled by your mind, not your heart. Um, and for some reason, for some of you guys, you may be experiencing the feeling of having to choose between what makes you happy or what your happiness is um, versus what is expected from you. So what I'm hearing is for this month of May, a lot of you guys are going to be dealing with uh, the outside world or those around you. Um, are the decisions that you're making, are they based off of how you interpret it affects those around you? Or are you learning to not be emotional when making decisions uh, solely, like I said, using your intellect um, and choosing uh, what is right for you. Um, there is this feeling of having, it's almost like a, a, a energy of having the opportunity to find your happiness or uh, to go after your happiness. Um, but right next to the Nine of Cups is the Hanged Man. So there is something that you're not seeing quite clear right now, especially because the moon is present in your cards. So the moon could represent a lot of hidden things that are unfolding, but it can also represent emotions that you uh, in the past perhaps can fully understand or can really express. Um, and with the hanged man, it is the not allowing yourself, not allowing you, Aries, to sacrifice yourself or your happiness um, based off illusions. So what is it that you're going after? What is it that you're trying to manifest? What is it that you are uh, making decisions about? And ultimately, it is a time for you to take a step back to fully analyze um, are you making these choices or these decisions based off of your emotions or what is right for you? Because what I'm hearing for a lot of you is there's an inner struggle that is happening right now and you connect your happiness in some shape, way or form to a sacrifice. Um, if I'm going to be in that relationship, that means that I have to put up with certain things that perhaps deep down in your heart, you're just not you don't want to deal with that anymore. Uh, you've outgrown that situation. Uh, nonetheless, because you're connecting with that person or the people that you're dealing with because you love them, you interpret that as having to sacrifice something, 
having to deal with something in order to continue the connection or continue dealing with them. What Spirit is telling you is that it's time for you to take a step back and focus on Aries and what it is that you want, regardless of how others around you are being affected right now. Uh, it's about standing your ground, but more than anything, it is about making decisions that are directly impact or are going to directly impact you, um, choosing what's right for you, basically, regardless of those around you or regardless of the feedback that you may be receiving or regardless if, you know, people or your partner or your family members, um, regardless if they agree, um, because the, the higher notion or the higher uh, message here is uh, what they're trying to evoke here with these cards. And I'm feeling it very strongly is uh, for a very long time, you've sacrificed a lot in order to uh, either accommodate those around you or to do what was expected of you. And what they're telling you now is it is a time for you to see things from a very different perspective. And choosing your happiness is not really a sacrifice. Uh, if anything, it is doing a service to yourself uh, to be bold, um, to be courageous when going or uh, choosing to go after your aspirations, your goals, your desires, what it is that you want. Um, and it's okay to want things. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, it's necessary for you to no longer become a martyr, no longer uh, being okay with sacrificing yourself or how you're feeling uh, to make uh, those around you more comfortable. So the message here is be true and be honest with yourself, Aries, for this month of May. I see a lot of you guys are going to be challenged in the sense of uh, what you consider is what you deserve. Um, so the strong message here is, do you feel like you have to sacrifice in order to be happy? Because that's what you've experienced uh, throughout this time that you've been living. Uh, whatever situations you may be dealing with right now, um, do you deserve to be happy? Uh, and if you genuinely feel like you do deserve to be happy, why is it that you feel like you must sacrifice something in order to receive what you're asking for? So it comes down to um, knowing that you deserve it and knowing it in your heart um, and being open to receiving whatever it is that your heart is desiring or whatever it is that you're wishing or trying to manifest. Uh, it comes down to believing in yourself. Um, but, but is about um, being okay with experiencing happiness or being happy. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that a part of you, that you have to sacrifice a part of you or something about you in order to maintain those connections. So it's about being true to yourself and making decisions based on, not based on emotion, but more so uh, having to do with what is right for you. All right, so let's pull out an oracle card to see what spirit wants to communicate, something that may tie uh, this whole reading. <clears throat> Here we go. And we have happiness. My lovelies, I think that the message is very strong and very powerful here in your cards, Aries. Uh, there is something about you that feels whenever you are about to experience a happy moment in time or in your life or uh, when you want something so bad that you want to uh, experience it fully, it almost seems like in the past perhaps you've experienced uh, bits and pieces of it, not completely. Um, and it has a lot to do with what your mind has accepted as a reality. And it usually indicates um, that your happiness comes at a cost of something. Uh, so I really encourage you guys to work through this for this month of May. Um, choose yourself, Aries. I know that that may seem selfish, um, but, you know, as time progresses and as we get older, you'll quickly come to realize that sometimes uh, we could be a little bit egocentric and we think that literally the world revolves around us, right? And a lot of times we make decisions 
um, because we think it's going to affect those around us and sometimes um, make the wrong decisions. And then we come to realize, like I said, as time progresses and we get older and wiser, you realize that you cannot live your life through the eyes of other people or through the expectations of other people. Um, you have to be courageous and daring when it comes to what it is that you want and going for it uh, without any feeling of what they may say or what they may think. Uh, so th the greater message here for you is be true to yourself and do what's right for you for this month of May. All right, my lovelies, I hope you enjoyed. Now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what is unfolding for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. How are you doing, Taurus? Hope you guys are doing amazing. What are the messages for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of May 2022? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what we can expect, what, they, what they're going to be dealing with for this month of May. What is it that they need to know at this present time? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right. We have here the King of Pentacles. Very good. Oof. Amazing energy. Yeah, the King of Pentacles, the Empress, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Ten of Pentacles. Holy moly. There is a major shift in your finances, Taurus. Um, so what they're telling you here for this month of May, it is all going to be about stabilizing your finances and creating a safe space or being mindful of the safe space that you're creating in your domain. So this could be in your career, uh, at work, this could be at home, this could be in your relationships, uh, not necessarily just romantic, but every relationship that, that we have on our everyday life. Um, what they're telling you here is with the King of Pentacles, you're coming on very strong, Taurus. Uh, this is definitely your energy. It is about solid foundations. And I feel like for a lot of you, you've been experiencing the past couple of months, a lot of a lot of changes that have been unfolding in your life career-wise. Um, and I feel like you're going into this momentum of very abundant energy. It is like being able to stabilize uh, where in the past it was a little bit more of a struggle or a little bit more of challenges. And what they're telling you now is it, you've it, it's time for you to pat yourself in the back, Taurus. You've been working really hard. And you're entering into this new cycle in your life where abundance and stability is something that is going to be experienced on a grander scale. Um, with the Empress here, it is about beauty. This is your ruling planet, Venus. So Venus is definitely being highlighted here and it's bringing to you many blessings, blessings that uh, perhaps for some of you guys, um, the, it, it could be as simplistic as uh, you applied at a job or uh, you applied for some type of uh, loan even or you're trying to uh, purchase your first home. Uh, anything that has to do with what you would consider um, stabilizing something, taking it to the next level. And where in the past there could have been a bit of blockages um, and it's been a long journey is what I'm hearing. Um, finally you're able to get to that that point of full manifestation and like i said it's been a very long journey for a lot of you uh, ten of pentacles is the uh you know the landmark of financial stability of abundance of success of having enough of sharing um being charitable for with those around you um these are this is a very important time in your life um, where there's going to be a lot of opportunities opening up for you. Uh, specifically, again, like I said, with finances, this is uh, taking it to the next level. This is standing out at your job or your work. Uh, this is people taking notice of the hard work and determination that you've been 
um, you know, that you've been doing, you know, putting your nose to the grindstone, if you've struggled in the past in regards to finances or uh, in regards to not having enough to do or not being challenged, that's quickly going to be changing um, because the King of Pentacles always wants to continuously keep building. Um, it is an energy of, of the entrepreneur type of energy. You're looking around. If, if you feel complacent or if you feel like you've been stuck at the same job for many years, uh, your imagination is starting to open up. Remember, the Empress is all about creativity. It is all about a burst of energy, of a burst of creativity that is unfolding for you, where you're going to be much more uh, creative. You're going to be much more open to the possibilities. Uh, this is doing side jobs. This is um, following a passion, some a hobby, something that is new to you or something that always grabbed your attention, but you weren't you know, that open or didn't have enough time to actually take on that. Uh, hobby or learning something a new practice and it's finally like you are recharged with energy and you are opening yourself up to more opportunities where that hobby may turn into uh, financial stability it may turn into something that you turn to, you turn out to be very passionate about um, and you can potentially grow from that little seed of imagination that little seed of um an idea that may start as a very small idea and turns into something physical, um, something in the material. So what they're telling you here is the month of May is very lucrative. If you've been thinking of starting a business, starting a new gig, um, and you just haven't found the time or whatnot, now is the time to do so because they are promising this month of May is going to be very lucrative for you. It is the right move. It is the right decision. It is about expanding and growing. Um, challenge yourself in that aspect. Uh, do not be surprised if there is a female energy around you in your career, professional life, um, that may start to want to take you under their wing or may want to give you some type of mentorship, some type of, um, it could be as simplistic as advice, financial advice. Uh, it could be something as grand of a gesture. Hey, um, you know, I, I see that you're very determined. You're very focused. Uh, I have a side job and I'm looking for a partner. I'm looking for someone that, um, you know, may want to start this business with me. And though it may take um, effort on your part, it is a great omen to have uh, the Empress right next to your card. So again, now is the time to take on um, any new endeavors that uh, that you may be very passionate about because it can actually, it's kind of like turning your passion uh, into your work. Uh, when you're doing something you're passionate about, it's not really considered work because you love doing it. So success is inevitable. Um, so again, very, very uh, beautiful energy here for you guys for this month of May. Let's see what uh, the Oracle message is for you guys for this month of May. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus to connect and bring in uh, this reading. Let's see what message Spirit has for you guys. Here we go. And the card is Focus. Absolutely, Taurus. Uh, really what they're telling you here is the sky is the limit for you right now. Uh, you're going into this new cycle in your life where uh, financial bliss and financial stability is unfolding in your life. Abundance is all around you. Now, when I say abundance, I don't necessarily just mean um, financial gain. Abundance is uh, being able to feel that you are at a point in your life where everything is a blessing. So again, focus on what it is that you're trying to manifest. Focus on what you're trying to draw into your life. Uh, put energy, do visualization exercises uh, so that you can open the portal to the manifestation quicker without any resistance. Okay, my lovelies? Alrighty. Now let's go to Gemini. Let's see what Spirit has for you guys for this month of May. If you guys like these readings, definitely like and share this video. Help us with the algorithm. All right, what are the messages for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this month of May 2022? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. 
Okay, we're starting off here with the Ten of Pentacles. Nice. Knight of Pentacles. King of Pentacles. Empress. Interesting. Um, you guys seen I shuffled the cards. Um, very interesting. You may be dealing with a Taurus. Um, for those of you guys that are dealing with a Taurus um, or a Taurus is dealing with a Gemini, um, I'm picking up like um, cross watchers. So this message may connect with you guys. Um, so what they're telling you here, Gemini, it's very, very interesting because it is the exact same cards except in very different positions. Um, so what they're telling you here is there is a desire to stabilize um, your home. Uh, this is directly connected with your home. Uh, so the home is not just, you know, your physical home, but it could represent the wanting to start or the desire or the want to stabilize something that you feel you lack in your home or in your life regarding your home life, regarding your family, regarding those around you. There is a constant uh, struggle that has been experienced when we're talking about stabilizing either a relationship, a partnership, or <clears throat> uh, stabilizing a relationship that would eventually turn into something long-term. Because I see that there's been a journey, a very long journey here in this process. Now, what they're telling you is there is a need for you to not be so stubborn, Gemini. Um, a lot of the times we experience a lot of things in our life that, you know, people have this habit of saying that, you know, um, that they're nothing like their dad or that they're nothing like their mother. Um, but those are unresolved issues and more often than not, you actually turn into one of them and it's usually the one you can't get along with or the one that you're usually bumping heads with. Um, and the reason for it is because you go about life trying to uh, connect or trying to uh, feel the love that perhaps there was lack of when in early childhood. Um, so for some of you guys, this has been a very challenging, um, when we're talking about relationships, specifically relationships, you have been very challenged in the sense of what you consider to be stability. Um, and for some of you guys out there, you know, uh, that have this tendency or this need um, to be very masculine energy. So you could be a female and evoke a lot of masculine energy. It, it's almost like a, a, a feeling or a desire of wanting to have control of a relationship, but in reality, it's not the relationship itself you're trying to control. What it is, is the desire to feel like you have control over how the relationship or connect, connection progresses. Um, in the shadow side, what you're doing is being um, a little bit overbearing or a little bit, um, you expect too much from your partner, um, without fully being willing to render the same expectancy that you're having towards them. So what I mean by that is it, you can fall into the stubbornness or being selfish type of energy. Um, and it has a lot to do with, for a lot of you guys, um, it is a general reading, so it could be a uh, father figure or mother figure, but what I'm picking up is for a lot of you out there, it could be a mother figure uh, that was either very challenging or that was very inconsistent in your life, um, that there is almost like this feeling of wanting to have control over the situation because there's a fear of abandonment. Um, and Again, we go back to that of what you expect very highly, uh, very much uh, have very high expectations of the people that you choose to date or that you choose to get emotionally invested in. Um, 
but you can tend to be on the selfish side. So what they're telling you here is you have to learn to be a little bit more practical, Gemini. You have to understand that when it comes to relationships, it is a understanding between two people of coming together or at least trying and making the effort of coming halfway through uh, for the other person. Now, because it is a general reading, there is an uh, overdoing or over expectancy, but for some of you, it could be the opposite. It could be that you have a tendency of overdoing for your partner, that it puts you in a position of being taken for granted, or that it puts you in a position of uh, feeling often um, empty handed because you do so much and they do the bare minimum. So what they're telling you here is it is very important for this month of May to figure out exactly what it is that you would consider stability. What is it that you want when we're talking about relationships? What is it that you expect? And whatever it is that you desire, whatever it is that you want the most when we're talking about relationships, are the people that you're dealing with or are your, is your partner, the person you're dealing with or dating, are they meeting the, that criteria? Are they meeting the need? not the desire, the need of what, what you need in order to feel emotionally supported in a relationship. Um, and that's going to be very important for you for this month of May. I feel like for a lot of you guys, uh, the opportunities of connecting uh, or dating um, is going to be very highlighted here for you guys. Um, so I do see a lot of opportunities of stabilizing, connecting with people and stabilizing some type of connection. But I feel like you may be a little bit stuck on, um, you know, like digging your <laughs> heels into the, into the dirt and like just not really wanting to put yourself out there. What they're telling you here, Gemini, is it's time to stop being stubborn. Stop expecting people to um, go out of their way you know, Miss Wright or Mr. Wright is not going to come knocking on your door. You have to put yourself out there. Uh, don't get comfortable in the comfortability of where you're at right now in life because I feel like in the past you've had a lot of missed opportunities. Now, for some of you guys, it could be that you're stuck and stubborn on someone that is just not working out. What they're telling you here is stop wasting your time, Gemini. It's time to uh, really open yourself up to new opportunities. Love is all around you. And the possibility of turning a, a relationship into something long-term is very highlighted here. But it's going to come at the cost of having to get out of your bubble, having to get out of your comfortable zone, um, and challenging yourself to be passionate about life again. Um, because I feel like for a lot of you guys, there's a lot of complacency that's going on here. All right, so we're going to pull out a oracle card for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirits, what are the messages or what is the message that may tie this reading to Gemini? What is the final message for them, please? Thank you. All right, so we have Healing Chaos. This is exactly the energy I was sensing, you guys. I feel like not sure if you guys can see it. I feel like a lot of the inconsistencies or instability when we're talking about relationships and partnerships <clears throat> has a lot to do with uh, past trauma. And at this point, what they're telling you is it's time for you to go to the next cycle in your life. Stop holding yourself back. Because I'm hearing, you know, there's there's not a lot of changes or a lot of things are not really happening when we're talking about love and romance. But what Spirit is telling you is it's not happening because you're not fully allowing yourself to heal. Remember, healing is going through the emotions of the traumatic events we've experienced um, and acknowledging them. But then it's surrendering. And surrendering has a lot to do with letting go of control. And I feel like you have an issue with that, Gemini. So... Uh, the advice for the month of May is let the bullshit go. It's time to move on. You deserve to be happy. Um, put yourself out there. Go after what it is that you want. Um, but more than anything, let go of past resentments 
or past experiences. Uh, not allowing yourself to connect with people because you've been hurt in the past ultimately is hurting you because there's a feeling of emptiness or a feeling of something missing in your life. And the reason for it is because you're preventing that. Uh, so in essence, you're kind of hurting yourself. All right, my lovelies. All right. I hope you understood and receive this message and sit with it for a little bit and um, make changes. It's always a good thing. All right. <laughs> Let's go to cancer. Let's see what spirit has for you guys. Okay, spirits, what are the messages for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this month of May, 2022? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this month of May, 2022. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? All right, here we go. Okay, Cancer. We're starting off here with the Five of Cups. The star card, the empress, that empress is coming out for a lot of you, and the justice card. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is there is a, there's some type of despair, some type of emotional turmoil that you're currently dealing with, uh, Cancer. For some of you guys, it's, uh, there was some type of hopefulness in regards to a situation that perhaps you didn't have much clarity on, or perhaps you were led astray. Um, there was some type of desire, some type of, uh, like I said, wish fulfillment that you were expecting or waiting on. Um, but with the Five of Cups, it turned out to be a disappointment. Um, what they're telling you here is don't be fixated on the things from the past that haven't worked out. Even if you're still going through that turmoil, even if you're going through that, those emotions right now, what spirit is telling you is you have to understand that on the grander scale of things, things always happen for a reason. There's always a reason and a purpose for it. Sometimes we can sit there and hope and wish and pray for something that we believe we want and your spirit guides will step in and I wouldn't necessarily say prevent it, but they will show you, they will reveal to you a person's intentions, who they really are to show you, to, 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 sh to shine the light into something that may be dark, may be hidden. And what they're telling you here is, although you feel that at this point in time, you've been disappointed, what you're not focusing on or what you're not realizing is that there's other things that are happening behind the scenes where spirit is trying to guide you to your path. It, they're trying to guide you towards your destiny. With the Empress and the Star card here, there is literally a blessing that will be unfolding for you for this month of May, where you thought there was a loss or there was some type of disappointment that you thought was a disappointment, but it turns out to be a blessing. It turns out to be your reward for good karma. It is... This is astronomical for you guys, uh, Cancer, because this is directly speaking about you may feel right now that you're not in control of your life or that you're not in control in regards to a situation. For some of you guys, it could be love. For others of you, it could be, you know, um, some type of situation that you may be dealing with court. Um, or for others of you, like I said, it could be in regards to love, romance. But ultimately what they're telling you is even though you feel like you took a hit or like you're currently going through a hit, it is a hidden blessing. It is a blessing in disguise. Why? Because in the month of May, you will experience, your spirit guides will show you the reason why you had to take that loss or the reason why you had to go through those emotions 
to understand the blessing, to appreciate the blessing that is coming your way. And again, out of the four cards, you have three major arcana. So this is out of your control. This is having to do with your destiny. This is having to do with the planet alignments that are assisting you at this present time. Now, for some of you guys, this could represent that there was a separation, a breakup, some type of disillusion of a commitment, a marriage, or a relationship. And you feel like it's been done, or perhaps for some of you guys, it's been a situation that you've been dealing for quite a while, and you're taking it like there's no coming back from that, and then all of a sudden, the whole energy shifts. The whole situation turns upside down, or it's kind of like w what I'm seeing uh, is like the wheel of fortune, where you felt like you were being crushed by the wheel um, at a point in time. Um, but in the month of May, you will get to the point of feeling like you're up in the wheel. Uh, so it is a blessing that comes to you based off of a, a loss, based off of what you thought was a disappointment. Now, for some of you guys, if you are currently dealing with uh, legalities or anything that has to do with some type of separation, some type of divorce, uh, some type of child support for some of you guys, uh, where there was a point in time where there was some type of uh, denial for you, or there's there's been blockage after blockage, or things just not going your way, you're quickly going to be surprised in this month of May how things turn out. And they're going to turn out to the best of your interest. Spirit is specifically wanting to let you know at this point in time that even though you're not aware of the blessings that are coming your way, the hurt or the pain or the disappointment was worth it because that's how much you're going to be able to appreciate the blessing that's coming to you. Now, for others of you, if this was a separation, a breakup, or a divorce, <clears throat> and you're recently experiencing this, sometime in this month of May, there's going to be things that are going to be unfolding for you where you're being realigned towards a person that is worthy of you that is going to turn into something long-term because we have the justice card here. So justice, empress, it's like your karma, your good karma is being given to you. It's being prized to you. It is... Um, being able to stabilize and find your emotional fulfillment, emotional happiness, emotional stability that brings to you some type of higher level of commitment. So very beautiful energy here. Cancer. All right. What is the oracle message here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus? To be able to wrap this reading for them, please, spirits. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right. Here we go. And we have success, beautiful energy, cancer. If whatever it is that you're currently going through, if you feel like it's overwhelming, it's difficult, and I'm, I'm strongly hearing like, I didn't deserve it, know and understand that you're right. You didn't deserve it. And that's the reason why spirit is bringing to you success. That's the reason why spirits, your spirit guides particularly, are opening up your eyes and they're guiding you towards the path that you should be walking on and it's going to bring to you so many blessings that you're going to be able to literally cry of happiness all right my lovelies okay let's go now to leo let's see what spirit has for leo sun moon rising and venus what are the messages for leo sun moon rising and venus if you guys like these readings, definitely comment below. Let me know that you guys enjoy these readings uh, where we do <laughs> all the signs. I feel like it's much more organic than to be doing uh, every single sign in a different video, only because I feel like the connection just becomes a little bit more, you know, the, the stopping and then starting to record. It, it doesn't fully allow the messages to come through organically. And I feel like this is easier um, because I just don't stop. <laughs> so anyways, if you guys enjoy these videos, definitely comment below and let me know. All right, Leo. What are the messages for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this month of 
May 2022. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. How are you doing, Leo? You guys are doing awesome. Okay, here we go. All right, we're starting off here with the King of Swords, Five of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, and Judgment. Wow, okay. So King of Swords, you may be dealing with Air Sign. Could be Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. There was some type of some type of discord or disconnect that happened between you and this King of Swords. Um, doesn't have to be their sun sign, could be their moon or rising, but it's definitely giving me uh, the energy of a person that is an intellectual. It's a person that has very, very much difficulty connecting with their emotions. They don't know how to fully express their emotions. Uh, they're more of an intellect type of energy, standoffish, a little bit cold, a little bit distant. Um, with the Five of Pentacles, there was some type of pulling away from this connection. Now, this could be a partner. This could be a romantic partner, someone of interest. Um, it could also be someone from your past, as we do have the Judgment card here. There was, I feel like there's certain things that are still unresolved between you and this person. Um, Five of Pentacles indicates to me someone in this connection pulled away. Um, for a lot of you guys, this King of Swords was the one that pulled away, um, creating a lot of confusion. And I feel like at some point in time, there was a desire within you to seek, to understand, or to receive some type of explanation of why they vanished is what I'm hearing. So whether it was the decision to completely ghost you or whether it was the decision to uh, bring the relationship to a conclusion, I feel like there was not much clarity in regards to this. But hold on because for the month of May, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be unfolding. Uh, truths that are going to be coming out. Um, for some of you guys, out of the blue, this person texts you, communicates or reaches out. Um, trying to trying to reconnect, trying to see if there is a possibility of being able to have a conversation about what happened. And I'm going to be honest with you, Leo, if this is a person from the, fa from the past, um, I feel like you're over it. I feel like there was a desire to want to have clarity, but at this point, I feel like you wrote it off already. It's like, it's done. I want nothing to do with them, but they're still doing that. They're still wanting to do that communication. I feel like for, for some of them or for some of you, uh, the person that's coming back around is like, I want to tell Leo my truth. I want to confess. I want to be honest. Um, unfortunately it, it may took, it took him a while. Um, but I feel like there is a bit of rejection on your part towards them. Like you're over it. Like I said, I feel like you're the one whereas they made you feel like they were very cold or they gave you the cold shoulder. Uh, I'm feeling like that's what you're, that's the energy that you're going to be taking on when this communication happens. However, the judgment card does indicate to me that there is a decision that will be made. Um, and I feel very strongly for a lot of you guys, it's like you're not wanting to revisit that no longer. Um, you've outgrown that situation. At some point, there was a desire or a want to have some type of clarity, to have some type of explanation is what I'm hearing. But um, as time progressed, I feel like you just became stronger and you fell into your energy, the Leo energy. You're prideful you're a person that you know your worth and you're not going to allow any because what i'm hearing is like i can't believe that they made me feel this this type of way um and i feel like that's a defensive mechanism but i feel like genuinely you're gonna feel that when this person reaches out to you it's like really i i don't want to hear it like i'm over it like i moved on um even though they still may affect you, I feel like you've mentally moved on from this situation. Um, I'm a little bit, let me pull out a few more cards just to get more clarity in regards to this. Oh, oh, they clarified that for me. 
Thank you, spirits. Okay, here's another one. Yeah, I feel like they've been watching you from a distance. I feel like there was something that happened, and I'm going to be honest. I feel like it wasn't... I mean, for some of you guys, it could have been that they started communicating with someone else, and that's the reason why distancing happened. But I feel like they were probably dealing with certain things in their life where they just felt like they didn't want it to affect the relationship. It's speaking to me about emotional immaturity. Um, but I do see like they've been watching you or they've been looking at you, kind of stalking you on social media type of energy. So I definitely do see them coming back around and they will definitely be communicating to you, whether it's through text or social media. But I feel that they're the one that is taking the steps towards trying to open that communication, okay? Let me see <clears throat> what the oracle message is for you guys in regards to the situation, spirits. What are the messages? What is the oracle card that you want to communicate to Leo for this month of May? Tying this reading. Okay, here we go. And the card is going forward. Yeah, exactly the energy I felt. I feel like there was a point in time, Leo, where you did want to get some type of clarity, some type of understanding. And I'm hearing like, I tried, I tried, I tried. Like you tried to understand them or you tried to get that communication, that, that clarity in regards to why they took those steps in either pulling away, either ghosting or completely just walking away from the relationship. And I feel like it really hurt you. But at the same time, I feel that by them doing that, they did you a they did you a favor because this person is emotionally immature. And I feel like you're the type of person that you know exactly what it is that you want and you don't waste time. So in essence, though you may have been really interested in them or really had feelings towards them, it made you realize that they're just not ready for you and your type of love. And that's a good thing, my lovely Leos, because you are loyal. The moment you commit, the moment you love someone, you're loyal. It takes you years to be able to move on. Um, and I don't mean like literally start dating other people. I mean like to genuinely get over someone. And <clears throat> by them doing this, I feel like it kind of shook you. And it also reminded you of what you deserve, what you deserve and how you deserve to be treated. And it reminded you of, you know, the amazing person you are. And it's like you've moved on mentally. You prepared yourself. You detached from the situation and you're moving forward. Going forward is the card that came out. So what they're telling you is you're on the right path. If you do hear from a person from the past or even if this recently happened where they went MIA for a while and they come back around, don't entertain that. It's time for you to move forward because what they're telling you here is they don't deserve you. They're unworthy of you. You're the prize. I, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that. <laughs> All right, my lovelies. Okay, now let's go to Virgo. I was trying to do these readings um, short, so it doesn't have to be a very long video, um, but they have a lot to say, so we can't rush, right? <laughs> All right, spirit guides, what are the messages for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of May 2022? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2022. Let's see what's going on with Virgos. What is it that they need to know at this present time? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, thank you. Here we go. We are starting off with the Two of Pentacles, Four of Cups, Eight of Pentacles, and Eight of Wands. Interesting, very interesting. So what they're telling me here is there is a balancing act that you're currently doing, right? Um, for some of you guys, it could be trying to balance your career, your professional life, your job, and your personal life. Um, I feel like for some of you guys, you've gotten to the point of physically exhausting yourself. 
Um, so there is a lot of imbalances that are going on. For some of you guys, you could be experiencing a lot of headaches. For some of you guys, you could be experiencing, you know, um, back pain um, or pain or pressure around your shoulders, around, you know, the back of your neck. Um, all of this is having to do with uh, pushing yourself, pushing yourself too much. Now, for those of you guys out there that are young and are into the party scene, uh, what they're telling you is you need to be careful that you're not pushing your limits, um, partying too much and then working a lot or working long hours because if you're starting to experience these issues, the headache, the back pain, um, the pressure in your shoulders and in the back of your neck, um, these are all signs of your body manifesting um, health issues based on the fact that you're pushing your limits or that you're pushing yourself too much. So there is a need for you to really balance that, to find a balance, an equal balance, I should say. Um, also, be careful with the over drinking. Uh, be careful that you're not partying too much. Um, now, specifically for some of you, you may not connect, but others of you take what resonates if you have a tendency of taking pills and having a few wine glasses be careful um, because they're warning you just to be care careful be mindful of that you don't want to end up in the emergency and it's accidental okay so what they're telling you here is, again, there's a need to find balance. There's a, a need for you to be able to release all the stress and the energy, uh, the stressful energy that you're experiencing or that you may be experiencing in the month of May. I would highly encourage you guys to take it in the positive or health the way of dealing with that, which is, you know, being a little bit more proactive, being a little bit more physical. Um, <clears throat> do anything that's going to help you release. This could be meditation. This could be yoga. This could be sex. This could be exercise um, that is going to help you with balancing those energies. Uh, because I really do feel like in the middle of May, um, all the way to the end of May, you guys are going to really start to experience a lot of feeling of like having a lot of things to do or like you're being pulled towards different directions because life is getting very busy for you. And again, the end of May, even um, June is what they're saying. For some of you guys, you can <clears throat> fall off on a couple of responsibilities. So what I mean by that is, again, it's kind of like if you start to experience a lot of momentum, a lot of changes, a lot of movement, um, having the need to uh, be here and then go there, um, just having a lot to juggle, uh, be careful in that aspect because there is, like I said, there's a need for you to find the balance. If you don't find the balance, then there are going to be certain things that come up uh, that are just going to make your life a little bit more difficult. So what I mean by that is, as an example, forgetting to pay the bill, uh, forgetting to pay the light bill uh, because you were so busy and you were doing one thing and another and you completely forgot and then you're stuck in your home in the dark. <laughs> it could be that simplistic or it could be something major like i said um having an accident and ending up in the emergency because you were tired you couldn't go to sleep you had wine and then you t accidentally took some type of pill uh to help you rest or to help you uh fall asleep so just be careful with that because what they're showing me is a lot of health concerns but these are health concerns that have a lot to do with the fact that you're on the go or you're pushing yourself to the limit so just be mindful and careful with that, um, Virgo. All right, and what is the oracle card that will tie in this reading for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Spirits, what is the oracle card for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Here we go. And we have stillness. Yeah, again, I feel like you're going to... That's if you're not already experiencing that Virgo, like you're feeling like you're being pulled towards different directions. There's a lot on your plate. There's a lot of things that you're juggling right now. Um, be careful with that. Prioritize, um, you know, get yourself a list. I know you guys are extremely good at that. 
of things that you need to stay on top of because it, it's almost like something very simplistic that we can forget or just put at the back burner and then we never get to it. Uh, potentially started as something very, like I said, very small uh, that may turn into something big or, you know, just make your life a little bit more difficult. So try the best you can um, to create like I said, just to stay on top of things, to, to prioritize. Don't take on more things that you're unable to do. As an example, at work, if they're asking you to take an extra shift or if they're telling you to uh, go in to cover for someone <clears throat> and you feel like you're just mentally exhausted, don't put yourself in that position um, because we're trying to prevent accidents and we're trying to uh, keep you at 100 health-wise. Stillness is the way to go. So try to incorporate, you know, at least every single day, 10 minutes of just meditation to help you ground yourself so that you don't feel like you're just, you know, uh, going with the wind. Uh, I hope that this gives you insight. And um, yeah, prioritize is the way to go, my lovelies. I know a little bit too much of that. <laughs> Being pulled towards different directions is a not easy all right all right now let's go to libra let's see what spirit has for libra sun moon rising and venus for this month of may 2022 spirit gets what are the messages for libra sun moon rising and venus what is it that they need to know at this present time for the month of may 2022 libra how are you doing libra Hope you're doing awesome. Okay, here we go. First card here is the Four of Cups. Nine of Cups, okay. Some type of disappointment. Queen of Cups and the Knight of Swords. What's going on, Libra? There was a missed opportunity. You had high expectations or high hopes in regards to a connection. This could be a relationship. This could be your partner. Uh, this could be someone you're casually seeing. Um, I feel like, I'm going to be honest, the first thing that comes to mind is they portrayed themselves or they shown themselves to be a certain way. Um, and then inconsistency started to happen. And what I'm hearing is there's a lot of excuses or a lot of storytelling. And storytelling to me uh, indicates a person that is very good at lying. So uh, there was something that happened here where there was a disappointment based on the perception that you had of, of a person. Something that I tell my clients when I'm doing personal consultations is a person can sell themselves when they're first getting to know you. They will show you the best side of them. They will, you know, portray themselves a certain way and help you or push you to connecting with them or liking them, making sure that you like them. Um, and the moment that they feel like you're emotionally available, you're open and you're giving them the opportunity, that's when inconsistencies start to happen. Why? Because a person can't maintain a character or a persona for so long, especially if you're spending a lot of time with them, they will start to reveal and they will start to show you their true intentions or their true character. And there is almost like this feeling of romanticizing uh, relationships um, for a lot of you Libras. So what I mean by romanticizing is, again, falling for the image of what you thought, right? The perception of what you thought that person to be. Um, and then being challenged in, in being able or being forced to see who they really are. <clears throat> so there's almost this feeling of like constantly telling yourself, well, they were amazing. They were so thoughtful. They were so, but then they're showing me this, but it must mean that what they first showed me was who they really were. So you kind of stick around longer than you should because you're hoping that that person that they, you know, portrayed to you or showed you in the beginning is going to show up only they don't because that's not who they really were so what they're telling you here is when we're talking about relationships and partnerships it's important especially for the month of may to pay very close attention to people's actions 
uh, not listening to their words or not listening to what they're promising or not even, you know, overlooking the excuses that they're creating for w the reasoning of their inconsistency. Um, even if it means having having the need to stand your ground, Libra. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, well, confrontation is not my forte. <laughs> But they are telling you there is a need for you to stand your ground, to know what you want. Stop overlooking uh, red flags because it just becomes this thing where you're constantly feeling like you're chasing. Uh, you're chasing to find the person that you initially got to know or the person that you initially fell for. Only that person is not there because it was an idea of who they were. Um, and they're showing you through actions who they really are. So again, if you're dealing with a situation where they're being hot and cold with you right now, it's emotional manipulation, Libra. Walk away from that. Knight of Swords coming towards the Queen of Cups. You got to cut the emotion. Um, you got to cut the connection because it's hurting because it's becoming something that it's like you're hopeful and they continuously keep promising you or they continuously keep telling you things are going to get better, but they're not, their actions is not, it's not matching what they're telling you. And it's time for you to, you know, have to take a step back and realize, you know what, this is who they are. Either you accept that and you're okay with that or you stop making excuses of why they're treating you so shitty and make the rational decision to walk away from that because you deserve better. Okay? Pretty strong message there for you, Libras. Yeah, because it's it's like uh it's like toying type of energy what I'm sensing. It's like I'm promising you that I'm gonna give you the world, I'm promising you that I'm gonna change, I'm gonna be consistent, then you're hopeful then you're, you know, uh, happy because you feel like you guys are on the same page. You're all up in your emotions being, like I said, being hopeful. And then boom, they stab you in the back again, or they let you down, or they promise you they're going to be there and they're not. It, it's, it's inconsistency. And at this point, what they're telling you is there's a need for you to cut that out. There's a need for you to, uh, you know, release yourself from emotional torture. All right, what is the oracle message here for uh, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What is the oracle card that ties in with this reading, Spirit Guides? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay, here we go. And we have potential. <laughs> this is something that often comes up in, in love readings, you guys. You're falling in love with the potential of someone, not who they really are. So when we're talking about partnerships, relationships, casual day, even if it's casual dating, don't fall for their potential. Don't fall for, oh, I have dreams of, of grandeur or I have, you know, you know, I, I want to own my own business. I want to start this. I want to, but yet they're lazy or they're not going out of their way to make things happen, or they're often complaining. It's like, don't fall for their potential. Don't. Either you accept them as is, or walk away from it, because you will be disappointed, Libra. It's, it's, it's about understanding, right? Understanding. And, and this is something that people often have, humans have a habit of doing that you fall for a person's perception right your perception of them and then they show you who they really are but then you kind of guide yourself out of ignoring those red flags because you're like well you know they said they wanted to do this or they had dreams and aspirations and they're so motivated and it's like your idea of who they are is, is not a reality of who they are. And this is something, you know, I often tell 
clients. Fall in love, allow yourself to fall in love with the person that is there, that is present, with the person that, whether it's their good, you know, their flaws and their virtues, and you understand and accept the flaws and the virtues, then you are falling for the genuine person. But if you are falling in love or connecting or allowing yourself or dating someone that you have or that you see potential in them, they're not there yet, but they might get there. That's you falling for an illusion, the desire of what you want that person to ultimately become. But that's where expectations happen and that's where disappointment is more pronounced because it doesn't work that way. You get what I'm saying? Like I can, I can see the best in you, Libra. I can see all the beautiful qualities you have, right? But if I don't accept your flaws as well, then I'm not learning to genuinely love every single aspect of yourself. I'm nitpicking at what I want to love and what I don't want to deal with. But then in the being hopeful that I'll change Libra, you know, I'll, I'll help them be a, a different person or I'll help them give up, you know, smoking or I'll, I'll help them. It, it's like you create all of these things in your mind and in your head and reality, you're setting yourself up for disappointment is what they're telling you. So take a moment, meditate on that. All right, now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what, what messages do we have for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this month of May, 2022. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is unfolding for Scorpios? What is it that they need to know at this point in time, Spirit? Scorpio, here we go. Okay, we have the Knight of Wands, Page of Swords, magician ooh, tower holy moly guacamole okay off the bat a lot of changes are happening with you guys there's a lot of momentum there is a lot of taking on new responsibilities the month of may what's coming to mind is you can make anything happen scorpio um but it's going to take you to deliberately put <laughs> uh effort towards making that happen uh, Knight of Wands is very quick, sudden movement. This is you taking on new responsibilities or going on a new endeavor, taking on a new endeavor. Um, Page of Swords, you need to be at your best. So be vigilant, pay attention. If you're going through, uh, you know, recently, or if you will, as an example, um, <clears throat> something comes up next week where uh, work and career-wise, they're expecting you to take on some type of training or they're providing some type of training. Become a sponge. Take in as much information as you possibly can. Why? Because the apprentice or apprentice will become the master. So this is about you imitating and emulating those that you highly respect, those that uh, have power and have authority. This is people around you. This could be your bosses. This could be uh, people in high ranking positions wanting to uh, create, um, wanting to bring out the best in you. And the reason for it is because there is, again, like I said, major potential that is unfolding for you. Um, magician and tower, major transformation. This is like life changing transformation. A lot of communication. A lot of rumors even, um, be mindful of that as well. If you have colleagues or people around you or even friends coming to you and gossiping, you know, try, try the best you can not to pay a lot of attention to that, stay in your course. Uh, the reason why is because what I'm hearing is for the month of May, focus is going to be crucial for you. Again, vigilant is something that's coming on very strongly for you there is some type of transformation that is happening here. I feel like you've earned it. 
I feel like they are mostly speaking about for uh, career and finances. Um, for some of you guys, if you are in a committed relationship or if you are married, um, as an example, and you are, or it's your partner, the one that is experiencing a lot of changes in the workplace or a lot of opportunities and they may come to you and they may tell you like they feel that they are overwhelmed with so much information or, or overwhelmed with what is expected of them. Try the best you can to be understanding Scorpio. Try the best you can to uh, continue maintaining that focus in them, uh, to motivate them, to let them know how proud you are of them and that you know they got it. Uh, why? Because again, there is this pivotal energy, this pivotal moment that's going to be coming up sometime around May that is going to be very transformative, um, not only financially, but it's like really being able to really being able to experience on a grander scale of things uh, what it feels like or what it is to take it to the next level. So again, um, and the reason why I'm saying for some of you guys that are in a committed relationship or married, um, uh, because I feel like the home is going to be challenged um, and it could potentially be that they are not having enough time to spend with the family, with to be at home. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be that they start to work extra hours. Uh, try the best you can to be understanding in this process. Why? Because again, I feel like it's it's being able to go to new heights. And in the going to new heights, this is also obviously if you're married or committed to the person, it's going to benefit you as well. So what they're telling you here is, um, you know, the sky's the limit for you guys. Um, don't forget to be vigilant. Stay on you know, what at, at your best, stay at 100%, um, take in as much information uh, from those around you. Like I said, try to emulate or imitate uh, those that are of higher ranking that are around you. Um, and when I say imitate, imitate not in a negative aspect, but in a positive. Try as an example, uh, when you look at people that are in high ranking positions, um, they are usually very, you know, at the best of their game. They are uh, usually the first ones to get there to work. They're usually the last ones to leave. They, because their work ethic is beyond, that's the reason why they are where they're at. So again, um, it's what I'm hearing for a lot of you guys is the month of May is going to be a transition from where you're at right now in life to a new status. But it also indicates that there's going to be challenges uh, with those around you that may feel a certain type of way because either you're being too much away from home or you don't, you're not making enough time to be around them. Um, and that's okay. Try the best you can not to um, really get in your head about this because those that are meant to be in your life will be there when it get when it gets bad and when it gets good they're going to be the first ones to be understanding because they want the best for you those that sit there and complain and whine and piss about uh, not having you around well maybe you don't need them because if they're not motivating you or feeding you uh motivation to take it to to always take it to the next level then that's the type of people you don't you don't want around you and again, be careful with gossip. Don't fall into that. Not for this month of May. All right, my lovelies. I'm going to be pulling out your oracle card here. Let's see what spirit has for you guys. What is the oracle card for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus to tie in this reading? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I feel like Scorpios have been going through this major change. Yeah, exactly. You have... You have abundance, my lovelies. I feel like <clears throat> the month of May and uh, July, uh, from the month of May all the way to July, I feel like you guys are blossoming. You guys are, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, when I see the magician in the tower, to me, it, it, it feels like having the power to manifest your wildest dreams 
and it's completely transformative, but it doesn't come without challenges. So challenges serves us to align ourselves to what we really want, right? Because if we don't work hard towards something that we want, well, we won't appreciate it that much, right? If it comes easy to us. So I feel like you're going to be challenged. And oftentimes when you are about to manifest something or when you are about to go into the cycle in your life where you're finally being able to see, um, you're being able to reap the rewards of your heart labor, oftentimes when you get to that point, it almost feels like everything around you starts to crumble. Um, this is relationships. This is... Uh, uh, connections, uh, family, friends, etc. It almost feels like you can't fully get there without ever it being balanced in every single aspect of your life. But the reason for it is because you're being challenged because Spirit is telling you, well, we want to know, are, are, you, are you meant for this? You know, are you capable of being su successful? And if it is, and if the answer is yes to that, then don't allow anything or anyone to come between you and your success. So it's about staying focused, my lovelies, okay? All right, let's go now to Sagittarius. Oh, okay. All right, what are the messages for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? You guys, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little raspier than usual. <clears throat> it's been an extremely long day. It is right now, um, May 5th, 4.52 a.m. So it's been a long day, you guys. <laughs> All right. What are the messages for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of May 2022? If you guys enjoy this reading, like I said, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's see what's going on with my lovely Sagittarius. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing amazing. All right, let's get it. We have the Justice card here, Star card, Whew, Wheel of Fortune, and the Four of Swords. Wow. Wowzers. Okay, so... What I'm hearing for you guys is there is a lot of balancing that's going on. So when I mean balancing is for some of you guys, if you were experiencing a lot of instability when we're talking about uh, romantic partners, when we're talking about love and romance, um, I feel that you're going into this you're going into this energy, Sagittarius, where you feel like like things are being revealed to you. Um, and the reason for this is because they're wanting you to make the right decision. It is time. It's time to pass judgment in regards to your current situation. There is something that you've been debating for some of you guys, this could be dealing with a marriage or some type of commitment. For others of you, this could also represent your karma. It can indicate going into a cycle in your life where all the bad karma, all the bad shit you've been going through is going to start to dissipate from your life and obstacles and difficulties are no longer going to be something of the present. But in order to go into this new cycle, there is a need for the old you to be dead. So what does this mean? Whenever, whenever we go into certain cycles in our lives um, and you come out to the conclusion of that old cycle, everything you went through, everything you've experienced has made you, right, has made you much more wiser, much more mature, more wiser, more than anything, right? Because we learn from mistakes. But that cycle that came to a conclusion and the beginning of a new cycle, you're no longer who you were at that point in time because you've over, 
you have overcame those obstacles or those challenges or those lessons. So what they're telling you is there is a desire within you to bring balance into your life. For some of you guys, this could be to bring in commitment. For some of you guys is following what your heart is telling you. So, and, and what I mean by this is I feel like destiny is at play right now, Sagittarius. So we have the star card and the wheel of fortune. These both cards are everything to do with destiny, with the astrological alignments with the planets, right? Celestial bodies that are currently majorly influencing you and influencing your path. With the justice card, there is a balancing of karma or a release of karma to be able to find the balance that your heart so has always desired. So there is major doors opening up for you, Sagittarius. There is major transformations that are going to be unfolding for you for this month of May. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm hearing May all the way to August. So for some of you guys, it's leaving that, you know, that old you, the, the old cycle. For some of you guys, it could be deciding, you know what, I don't want to be in this toxic marriage anymore. I don't want to deal with this. I'm over it. And it's not so much that you're over it, it's that you've outgrown that cycle. So that old you must come to an end. It must die in order for the new you to be reborn, right? In order for the mature, in order for the wiser Sagittarius to step up to your full potential. With the star card, it is literally being able to see light at the end of the tunnel and where you felt at some point in your life or in some place in your life right now where you feel lost, you feel like you've lost your way, the realigning of the wheel of fortune is bringing, it's bringing you, it's like, it's literally opening the doors up, telling you Sagittarius, walk through this freaking door. Like, this is what you deserve. Like, stop hindering yourself or stop sacrificing yourself in order to make others happy. Stop sacrificing yourself in order to make that relationship that is going nowhere. Uh, stop holding on to that. It must come to an end. Because if, as an example, if you've been dealing with a marriage that is just not working out for you, right? And you have to step up. You have to raise your vibration. You have to step up to, to, to the plate and be ready to take on this new cycle in your life, making the best life you can possibly make. It's going to come at the cost of having to make the decision to walk away from a marriage that no longer serves you. A marriage that you've outgrown. Why? Because the old you maybe would have stood there, but the new you needs to find a partner that is more aligned to where you're at at this point in, in time. And now for others of you, this could even represent making decisions of cutting friendships out, walking away from people that are not, they're no longer serving you. They're not, uh, they're not inspiring you. They're not allowing you to grow spiritually. They want to continuously keep giving you booze or giving you drugs or giving you gossip or giving you drama. And what Spirit is telling you is you've outgrown this. It's time to take it to the next level, Sagittarius. It's time to go after what you really want and fucking own it. Be unapologetic about what you want. Stop worrying about others and those around you because a lot of the decisions you've made have came at the sacrifice of your own happiness. You got to stop doing that. Spirit is telling you, you have the justice card here. Stop feeling emotions for everyone or thinking about everyone's emotions. 
What is it that Sagittarius needs to do for Sagittarius? What is right for you? Not how is it going to make other people feel? No. What is it that you want? And with the star card, align yourself to your path. The North Star, right? In the natal chart, what is the North Star? It is going towards your destiny. What you were born to become. Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter. That's your planet. Jupiter's telling you, I'm here to bless you. It's been difficult. It's been trialing. But you know what? In the past, maybe it was your karma. You've outgrown that. What are you going to do about it now? Are you going to continue holding back? Or are you going to be so fiercely committed to yourself and to your happiness that you're going to go towards what makes you happy and what, you're re what you really want? Four of Swords, going through a, comp a contemplation process. Difficult decisions are difficult for a reason, right? They don't come easy. But there is a need to let go of the old you in order to be able to embrace the new you, Sagittarius, and to bring out the best in you. All right, my lovelies. All right, let's see what the Oracle card is here for Sagittarius. What is the Oracle card here for Sagittarius? That may tie this whole reading for them, spirits. What are the messages? Oracle card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Here we go. And we have happiness. My lovelies, you got powerful cards, Sagittarius very powerful cards you have justice venus star aquarius jupiter major arcanas this these are things that are happening right now and they are unfolding sagittarius and you're not in control of that because your destiny is at play right now take time to analyze to figure out what it is that you want. Hey, it's okay if you feel lost, if you feel like you don't know exactly what it is that you want out of life or where you're going towards. It's okay to feel that way. But have you taken the time to take a step back, to breathe, to figure it out? Now is the time to do so. It's time for Sagittarius to think about Sagittarius. What makes you happy? What is it that your heart desires? What is it that you truly want? Go after it. Make it happen. Now is the time. All right, my lovelies. Okay, now we're going with Capricorns. Let's see what the messages are here for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What are the messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this month of May 2022? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay, one more. Here we go. All righty. Capricorn, we have the Magician. Strength card. Tower. Holy moly, guacamole. And two of swords. <laughs> What the fudge is going on, Capricorn? Wow. What I'm hearing, <clears throat> what I'm hearing, Capricorn, is if you want to make waves, if you want To really take it to the next level, the month of May is going to be crucial and important for you to be vicious. So what I mean by vicious, <clears throat> what I mean by vicious is be aggressive, Capricorn. Top, stop taking a seat in the back. Stop 
you know, when when you're at work or when you are in your professional uh, setting and the bosses are asking, you know, is there any feedback? Is there, stop biting your tongue. Like now is the time to really show people what you're made of. You have the magician and the strength card. You have the potential to manifest whatever it is that you want through aggression and wisdom. So what do I mean by that? Aggression and wisdom. Stop being a doormat. Now is the time to show what you're proficient at. Now is the time to show what you've mastered. Now is the time to be bold in going towards your aspirations and making things happen. You have the magician, the strength, and the tower. All right. This alone is like you're going into this cycle where you're going to blow people's minds away. Like there is something about you that is going to be revealed to the world or to those around you, a side to you they've never seen before. And being vicious in the aspect of no longer taking a seat back, no longer biting your tongue, no longer uh, doubting yourself. This is the month to be confident. This is the month to demand that race. This is the month to demand, I don't know, a freaking day off or something. <laughs> this is the month to go after what you desire, Capricorn. Get out of your head and make things happen. Now, keep in mind, strength is passion. The magician is also a very passionate card. So what they're telling you here is stop suppressing your animal instincts. Whether it's to be passionate, whether it's <clears throat> being physical, whether it is really showing what I'm hearing is show the world what you're really capable of but I feel intuitively what I'm feeling in regards to that is there is a lot of things that you've prevented yourself from doing Capricorn because of image because of how you don't want to be perceived because of how you were raised because of like all of these because right but what they're telling you is now is the time to let go of the expectations or what you think your expectations are or the expectations that people have from you. And be bold and unapologetic about being your true authentic self. If you want to be passionate, you want to be intense and you want to just have fun there's nothing wrong with being unapolog or being unapologetically fun without having to explain yourself you're a grown ass person if you've been dealing with or dating casually dating um and you feel like you've been restricted because oh I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna give it to them right I'll make them work for it or if you're a guy you know I I'm really interested in this person but I don't know if I should take it to the next level I don't want to make them feel rushed if you want it take it is what they're telling you Capricorn this month of May whatever it is that you want Whatever it is that you desire, that you want to make happen, take it. Take it in the sense of make it happen. Stop biting your tongue. Stop being overly shy or extremely an introvert or just not being confident. You have the full potential to manifest whatever it is that you want. 
And in order to have that transformation, in order to take it to that next level, in order to completely transform your life, it's going to take for you to be bold, to get out of your comfort zone, and to be aggressive. That's your natural nature, Capricorn. You're ruled by Saturn. That is your nature. Embrace it. Stop denying yourself from things that, like I said, animal instincts. Stop suppressing things that you desire and you want because then you become a slave to your desires. And your desires are a part of you. Stop rejecting certain parts of yourself. It is time to embrace them because that's what makes you, you Capricorn. Be aggressive in the, be aggressive in the energy of being aggressive and fighting to be who you truly are and who you were meant to be. The month of May, like I said, there's major transformation, a major shakeup that's going to be unfolding for you. But it's going to come at the cost of getting yourself out of your head, of being bold and confident. believing in yourself that's what it is you want transformation get out of your own way get out of your head I'm feeling for a lot of you guys it's like you've had so many opportunities and you've let them go because you were too busy thinking when was the right time this could be relationships, this could be career, this could be finances, this could be in every single aspect of your life. It's like you're waiting and waiting and waiting for the perfect time or you're waiting for the other person to be the one to take the lead or you're waiting for your boss to magically realize that you're a good worker and to give you that, that raise or that position, like fucking take it. Stop waiting for the perfect time. Stop being your amazing, patient person that you are. I know Capricorns have a tendency of saying you guys are not patient, but Saturn is your ruling planet. What does that mean? As time progresses and we get older, we're taught very hard patience. It is all about discipline. Now that you got that down, now it's time for you to be aggressive. Now it's time for you to make shit happen. You know, maybe you've had people around you that have taken certain opportunities that should have fell on you, but they took it. They just took it. And you felt like there was this process in your head of overanalyzing and overthinking. The month of May is going to be very important for you to believe in yourself, Capricorn, to be aggressive in fighting to be who you truly were meant to be. All right, let's pull out an Oracle card here. What is the Oracle card for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What is the message for Capricorns here so that we can tie this reading for them. Spirits, what are the messages? Oracle card for Capricorn. Okay, here we go. And we have transformation. Beautiful energy, Capricorn. That's exactly what I see. Major transformation. It's like you're finally becoming I keep saying aggressive and I feel like I feel like I have to kind of explain the aggressiveness not aggressive and like go fight people <laughs> um aggressive in the same in the sense of taking action I feel like you've gotten to a point where you're blossoming you're transforming you're becoming the beautiful butterfly stop waiting you are there already capricorn but you need to believe in yourself and you need to be 
confident. Stop doubting yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. And embrace this new cycle because this is going to be very liberating for you. You'll start to see things start to fall into place much more easier. You're going to start to experience a lot of happiness in your life as well. You come to the realization that you did a lot of wasted time because you, again, you weren't allowing yourself to fully be who you are. All right, my lovelies, beautiful, beautiful energy. All right, let's go to Aquarius. What are the messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of May 2022? What are the messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Okay, I'm going to put them back. Too many. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Oh, oh, okay. <clears throat> I said too many and they came out more. So we are going to stay with them. All right. All right, Aquarius. We have the Knight of Swords, Judgment, Page of Swords, Nine of Cups, Queen of Cups. A lot of emotions going on here, Aquarius. There is quick and sudden communication that's going to be unfolding for you, for some of you guys. This is having to do with someone from your past. You may be dealing with uh, water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. For others of you, you may be dealing with Scorpio energy. I feel like for some of you guys, you were very quick in making a decision in regards to a love interest, Aquarius. So... What I'm hearing is for some of you guys, like I said, I feel that there was a quick decision. You kind of rushed into something. For some of you guys, it could have been rushing into some type of commitment um, or rushing into getting yourself into another connection while there was some type of distancing or some type of separation uh, with the previous partner. Now, what I'm hearing is for the month of May, there's going to be a lot of communication that's going to be happening through social media. So for some of you guys, this could be you hearing from a person from the past. This could be an ex returning. This could be someone that was of interest to you in the past that will be reaching out um, or communicating with you either through social media. For some of you guys, it could be accidental. So what I mean by accidental could be like you are in a dating app and they randomly send you a message because they seen your profile. Um, yeah, because I'm hearing accidental and social media. It's almost like you were not expecting that. Um, but I definitely do see them trying to open communication here, wanting to see if uh, there is a possibility of rekindling some type of connection. Now, for others of you, if there was a recent argument or some type of fight, something where um, the person of your interest or the person you're dating or your partner, um, you guys were not being able to be or get on the same page and there was a lot of arguments, someone could have rushed into the decision of breaking up or giving each other some space and some room. If you are dealing with that type of situation, do not be the one and listen to me. Do not be the one to reach out to them for this month because there is a need for them to understand or to realize what you bring to the table and they're not going to be able to, to see that or they're not going to be able, like basically give them the opportunity to miss, to miss you. Allow them to feel the absence of you because only then are they going to be able to reach out and become emotionally available when they reach out. So what I mean by that is if there was a recent separation or a recent breakup and you're the one that's been trying to contact them or texting them or trying to communicate with them, you're only in essence pushing them more away because they don't want to deal with that right now. 
So by giving them their space, you're also allowing them to realize that just like they think you're always going to be there, you may not always be there. So you allow them to miss you. And only through that are they going to have the breakthrough of understanding or at least wanting to understand their emotions that when they reach out to you, there is open conversation that is wholehearted open conversation. They're being honest because if you're the one to, to be the one to, you know, connect that bridge and continue to want to maintain that communication, what's going to happen is there's going to be a, a, a com conversation or some type of communication that happens, but they're still going to be very inconsistent in their actions towards you. Meaning they may bullshit you and be like, I'm not sure if, you know, we're wanting the same thing. I'm not sure if let's just see what happens, but they're not officially telling you, yeah, let's go back with each other or yes, let's work it out. Do you see what I'm saying? So don't do yourself the disservice of being the one to reach out to them. Because if, if you do, like I said, I feel that there's going to be a disconnect versus if you allow them to feel your absence and to understand that you're here now, but you may not always be here. That's going to make them appreciate you more and understand that they do have feelings for you. Don't make the mistake of being the one to be stalking. If you're the one that's looking through social media or seeing what they're up to or what they're doing, because they are aware that you're looking at them Aquarius. They are aware that you're looking into them and just stalker vibes, like don't do that. Um, give them, like I said, the absence of your presence. That's what's going to really shake them and also make them question if you yourself have lost interest or if like what's going on in your life that, you know, what's going on in Aquarius's life that they're not reaching out, that they're not trying to open conversation, like, are they being entertained somewhere else? Um, and the whole, the whole point to this is to kind of give them that shake that they need in order to understand that you're there because you're choosing to be there, not because you have to be there. Do you see what I'm saying? All right. Let's see what your Oracle message is. What is the Oracle message here for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What oracle card to tie this reading for them? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a very strong energy for some of you. Like getting a message through social media or through a dating, you know, internet dating app or something like that where there is unexpected message that comes through and it is a either a ex-partner or someone that you dealt with casually in the past um and it, it's it's kind of like it's very surprising or it catches you very much off guard but at the same time i feel like it there's potential there you guys so if you didn't date someone or it didn't become something official um you kind of just fell off uh, with this person and, and you get a message or they contact you. Um, see where it goes. Don't be quick to shut it down because I feel like timing was something that was an issue in the past. All right. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the Oracle message here for them? Okay, here we go. And the card that we have here is thriving. I feel for a lot of you guys, um, love is going to be something that is going to be taking center stage for you guys in this month of May. Um, unfortunately, yes, it has a lot to do with dealing with people from the past because I do see people from the past returning. But I also do see love around you, Aquarius. So for those of you guys that are single or that recently became single, Put yourself out there because I definitely do see a lot of opportunities and thriving um, speaks about uh, being able to fully embrace that which is around you that comes in abundance. And if you can see up here, 
it's like a little balloon um, but it's definitely standing out a lot to me it's pink and it looks like a heart so I see love all around you surrounding you right now so definitely embrace that energy Aquarius especially those of you guys that have been single for quite a while put yourself out there my lovelies love is all around all right finally Pisces let's see what's going on with Pisces Sun Moon Rising and Venus what are the messages for Pisces Sun Moon Rising Venus for the month of May 2022 what are the messages for Pisces Sun Moon Rising Venus for the month of May 2022 what is it that Pisces needs to know at this point in time what are the messages for them Pisces Sun Moon Rising thank you friends okay here we go Pisces, we have the Knight of Pentacles, the King of Swords, the Four of Cups, and the Queen of Pentacles. Okay. There is... Hmm. I feel like you're being distracted right now, uh, Pisces. What they're telling you is, right now at this point in time, it's very important and very crucial Um to prioritize your responsibilities as well as your goals. Um, so what I mean by that is, I feel like there is a lot that you want to do that you want to make happen or for some of you guys taking on new endeavors, um, but there is a bit of lack of grounding. Um, so for some of you guys, it could be as simplistic as uh, an example, having a lot of responsibilities and having uh, the time for, you know, to become a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more grounded in what your aspirations are. So as an example, if you are wanting to start your own business and you keep telling yourself you're going to start your own business, but you're not really taking practical steps towards making that happen, then that's just procrastinating. And I feel like there is a lot of wasted time uh, that you could be using um, that could potentially be something that is going to greatly impact and help you stabilize your life. Um, so for, for others of you, it could just be that you're distracted. It could be that you are having uh, a bit of a discord in regards to what your mind is telling you and what your heart is telling you. For some of you guys, it's pouring and giving a lot of effort and a lot of energy towards a connection that is not being reciprocated. I feel like for some of you guys, um, you may be dealing with uh, Earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. For others of you, you may be dealing with an Air energy, Aquarian, Gemini, Libra. I feel like there's been a situation that's been brewing for some of you um, where there is a lot of a lot of effort that you've put into this connection and I feel like it's just not being reciprocated. Uh, you're feeling like you're still constantly being the one to uh, carry the relationship or the connection or make the effort. Uh, this could be you being the one to set the dates, being the one that goes out of your way to go visit your partner or person of interest while when, you know, when it's their time or when it's their turn, they just don't they don't seem to step up. What Spirit is telling you here is stop wasting your time. You are continuously choosing uh, to allow this person to belittle you when, when you should know your worth. Uh, you should know what it is that you deserve. You see, Queen of Pentacles here is holding the pentacle, right? It, it, she's looking into it she's seeing the value that she's holding which is why she's possessing the the pentacle in her hand so what spirit is telling you is there is a need for you to validate yourself stop expecting others um or stop having the need for others to validate you what others think about you doesn't make it real it has more to do with what you think of yourself, Pisces, that makes it real. For some of you guys, this could have this could have a lot to do with the dynamic of relationships that you have a tendency of settling. You have a tendency of settling with the bare minimum, but yet they, your partners, make you feel like you're asking for too much. 
when in reality, it's just the bare minimum. So again, it's about knowing your worth. It's about knowing what you deserve and not settling for anything else. Now, for some of you guys, the Knight of Pentacles here could potentially represent physical body. So there is something within your mind, something that becomes almost like a barrier uh, to fully be able to be present in the moment and experiencing connections or when you're dealing with people, uh, not giving yourself enough time to come to the conclusion or realization, do you even like them? It's like you're constantly putting yourself in the situation of, do they like me? Do they care for me enough that they're going to put effort? Do they care enough for me that they are going to want to see me again? Um, and you get so wrapped up in this mentality that you kind of miss the point and sometimes don't even realize if you yourself actually like the person. Like, is, uh, is this the person that you want to bring around your family? Is this the type of person that you can see yourself uh, having a long-term commitment, re committed relationship? Is this the type of person that you want to uh, raise your children? Or is this the type of woman that you want to be the mother of your children? You know what I'm saying? It's like you get so wrapped up in the, you get so much in your head, Pisces, when it comes to relationships that you're most often, because maybe in the past you've experienced a lot of rejection or a lot of being taken for granted, that when you connect with someone, um, you are so quick to want to prove yourself, to want to uh, be likable, that you don't, like the thought doesn't even cross your mind of, do I even like this person? Do I even connect with this person? And it has a lot to do with, again, missed opportunities from the past. So this could be either being rejected. This could be that uh, maybe you have a tendency of connecting with people that are emotionally unavailable to you um, and the people that are extremely good for you. And that could potentially give you consistency or long term uh, just become boring to you because it's not really a challenge. So what the, the message here, what they're telling us for this month of May, it is going to be very important for you to work on loving yourself and work on really valuing your time. As an example, um, if you're not the one to reach out to friends, friends don't reach out to you to check up on you. Um, for the month of May, it's going to be very important to be very exclusive to your energy like don't don't put your energy out like that um don't be the one to look for friends don't be the one to reach out don't be the one to allow them allow the people in your life to show you through actions that they care for you that you matter that it's their turn to reach out and see how you're doing and if they're not doing that then maybe it's time you start to create distance uh with those people because what they're telling you here is it's kind of giving me the energy of uh, you keep giving, 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 and you're often feeling left like you're empty handed. You're often feeling left like people don't appreciate what you do. And if this is something that is constant in your life, in every aspect of your life, whether it's family, friends, relatives, uh, relationships, um, whether this is something that you often have a tendency of feeling, then they're not going to change um, their way of treating you or their way of making you feel until they notice a change within yourself. In essence, we kind of teach people how we want to be treated by what we allow um, people to do or what we let people, what we allow things to slide, right, from people. Um, you're teaching them that it's okay or you're teaching them that you're fine with you know, them texting you at two in the morning and you're quick to answer, but yet when you text them, it's like crickets, right? Um, it is about putting your, stop putting people in a pedestal and it's time for you to learn to put yourself in a pedestal for you to value yourself and 
to to love yourself enough that when you feel like your type of love is not being reciprocated, it's time that you take it away from those people. All right, my lovelies. All right, let's see what the Oracle card message is for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is the Oracle message? Oh, okay. Thank you, spirits. We have pleasure. Yeah, um, what I was feeling initially when we're talking about relationship and partnerships was... Um, kind of the situation where you feel like you often have to prove yourself or like you want people to like you so much that you kind of forget to take a step back and realize if you like them. You know what I mean? That's the type of energy I'm feeling. And for some of you guys, um, the reason why, for some of you, uh, the reason why you put yourself in situations where people often make you feel like they don't appreciate you is because you allow them, um, you allow them Pisces to, I'm trying to figure out how I can say it without saying it too brutally honest. <laughs> um, just stop allowing people to take advantage of you. If, as an example, if you're dealing with someone and you're only dealing with them at night, they only want to see you at night um, to be with you physically, then it doesn't take a scientist to realize that they're just wanting to use your physical body, right? Um, if they are coming around you and you're stable and you're allowing them to like crash at your home once in a while or whatever, and they only come around you whenever it is that they're out partying, then obviously you know that it's the, you know, the comfortability uh, that they're coming to um, and not really putting effort or energy towards, you know, wanting to spend time with you. Um, so what they're telling you here in essence is open your eyes and stop allowing people to treat you like shit, Pisces. Um, it's time that you really put yourself, like knock whoever you have in a pedestal and put yourself in a pedestal. Only by doing that are you going to be able to realize and to teach yourself, force, literally force yourself um, to learn that when we sacrifice ourselves to make someone happy, we're always going to feel like there's a part of ourself that's dying or there's a part of ourself that is missing because we can't really be who we want to be, right? You're trying to accommodate someone else. Um, and then you often ask yourself or find yourself asking like, why can't they do this for me when I do this for them? Well, you need to understand that they're not you. And if they're not willing to love you in the love language that you understand, then you shouldn't waste your time with people like that. All right, my lovelies. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed all the messages. If you did, definitely like, share. Uh, like I said, if you guys enjoy these videos, definitely comment below. Let me know and I will continue to do so or continue to do them for you. I want to wish you guys the very best. Many blessings for this month of May. Wish you guys the best and we'll see each other soon. All right. Till then. Bye bye.